Now, when it comes to my digital life, the word collector comes to my mind. If that sounds like you, a network attached storage device or NAS for short is the perfect investment to make your files wirelessly available on any device in your home. Now, these devices can get expensive. So in this video, to save money, reuse your existing USB drives and to get the same functionality, let's build one using a Raspberry Pi 4 at its core and also use it as a DIY smart home hub using Homebridge. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple ecosystem, then I have done tons of Homebridge tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, there are plenty of ready built NAS devices out there. You can just buy one, pop in a disk drive and you are good to go. But again, they can get expensive. Now to do that, that's where Open Media World comes into the picture and allows you to build a DIY NAS. Now with a NAS on your network, you can use it to store and play your movies, store backups, run Docker containers, and do a lot more for your DIY smart home. Now the end result of this tutorial, as you'll be building a DIY NAS, you'll also be getting a functional DIY smart home hub that comes bundled with Homebridge, Zigbee to MQTT, scripted for your RTSP cameras, and Heimdall to build those easy web shortcuts, plus use Watchtower to update all of your containers automatically. So what will we need? We will need a Raspberry Pi 4, a 32 GB class 10 micro SD card, and depending on your Pi case, you can also use a SSD card. Now you'll also need some USB hard drives that you already have with you. And to connect to Zigbee devices, a Zigbee dongle will be required and we will be using the Sonoff Zigbee dongle. You can also use a Conbi 2 stick or any other that works well with Zigbee to MQTT. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. Now technically, you can go ahead and install side by side Open Media Vault with Homebridge. Doing so, no application will have ownership over the Pi's hardware, which in return doesn't give you that through DIY NAS functionality. What we're going to do in this video is go ahead and flash an SD card with Raspberry Pi OS Lite and using my magical script, we will go ahead and install Open Media Vault and within the application install Docker and Portainer and use another magical script to install Watchtower, Homebridge, Zigbee to MQTT, Scripted, Heimdall to give you that ultimate DIY NAS for your smart home. So let's talk about those two magical scripts that we're going to use in this tutorial video. The first one is the Open Media Vault installer. Now I do scripts because to help you to reduce the number of times to copy paste commands and avoid any mistakes. So in this first script, all we're going to do is go ahead and update all of the packages uh, within the Raspberry Pi OS and then just go ahead and install the Open Media Vault. Now, this is the first script. The second script is where we're going to install all of the containers. So again, we're going to first update all of the packages if there are any. And then from there, we're going to install Watchtower to automatically update all of our containers. Then from there, we will go into the Homebridge setup, which will install using uh, port 8581, the default one. From there, we will go and set up MQTT. Then we will go ahead and download the configuration, the YML for Zigbee to MQTT, as well as install the container. Then from there, we'll install Scripted to enable HomeKit Secure Video for all of your RTSP cameras. And then we'll go and install Heimdall, a very useful, productive application to instantly, instantly uh, access all of those web applications like Homebridge, Zigbee to MQTT, and Scripted itself. So it, it creates quick shortcuts. And then from there, automatically reboot the hub. So these are the two scripts uh, that we're going to use. Now, what we're going to do first is go ahead and flash the SD card with Raspberry Pi OS Lite. So to do that, you want to go ahead and download the Raspberry Pi Imager. I've left a link in the description. And once installed, what we're going to do is open up the application. We're going to go ahead and click on choose OS, Raspberry Pi OS. 
and you want to scroll all the way down and select the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit version and then you want to go ahead and select true storage and you want to select the SD card so in this case is the 32 GB micro SD card and before you go and click on write you want to click on the gear icon and here you want you don't want to enable a Wi-Fi password one of the good things is connect the hub using a uh, Ethernet cable for quicker connectivity on your local area network so I'm going to click on no and you want to set a host name so I left the default at raspberry pi dot local you can put whatever uh, you'd like and then I'm going to go ahead and enable SSH so we will need to use SSH to use those uh, magical scripts and what you want to do is you want to create a username and password so make sure you remember this username and password because it's going to be the same information within open media world so I'm going to be using pi and I'm going to put a password and then you want to disable this configure wireless LAN because we're going to be using ethernet cable and then you just want to set the set local settings this will get in the time zone and then you want to click on save now from there, all you have to do is click on write. Give it a couple of seconds, let it download the image, flash the SD card, validate it. Now once a micro SD card is written with the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, what you're gonna do is um, remove the SD card, insert it into a Raspberry Pi 4, put it into the Pi 4 case, connect it to the uh, ethernet cable to your router, and then from there power up the device. Now. Once your device is powered up and you're not sure what is the IP address, then you can use the app called LANSCAN. And then all you have to do is click on the play button and you will know the IP address. Now, once you identify the IP address, in my case ends with dot two, you want to access your router settings and reserve the IP address, which is very important for the NAS to function correctly on a network, as well as the DIY smart home hub. So in this case, it's dot two. So I'm going to quit LANSCAN. I'm going to go ahead and open up terminal, go to SSH, put in the password. Now from here, we're going to run the first script. It's going to clear the screen, paste. So we can go ahead now and click on enter. Now the open media vault installer takes between 25 to 35 minutes. So you really want to be patient. And also we're going to update all of the packages. So all in all, it takes a 40 minute for the entire installation to complete and for the reboot. So please be patient. And thanks to the magic of editing, I'm just gonna splice this entire part and go to the point where it comes to reboot. Now, once the rebooting is complete, you wanna access the same IP address and access the uh, web UI of OpenVault. And the default username and password is admin and the password is OpenMediaVault. And then from there, what we wanna do is go ahead and change the default password to access the web UI. So you want to click on the gear icon, click on change password and put in your desired password. Then once that's completed, we'll just tweak some quick settings to make sure it works as a NAS. So we'll go to services, we'll go to SMB settings and click on enable, scroll all the way down, click on save, and then you want to go and apply changes. So, so with this, you can go ahead and access all of the hard drives that we will connect and also see how to access them over the network. Then from there, you want to go to system. You want to go to OMV extras, click on Docker, and we'll just go, go ahead and install Docker. Now with Docker installed, what we're going to do is go ahead and click on Portano, and we're going to go ahead and install Portano. Now these are the two applications that is within Open Media World and needs to be installed without any additional commands. So let's go back to Portano. We can see that now the Portainer service is also up and running. Let's open up a new tab using the IP address of the Open Media World. Then it's in dot two and the port is 9000. Let's go ahead and create a password. And then from there, we want to click on get started. And then from there, you want to go to the dashboard and we can see that we can click on settings page and we can go and add in some widgets quickly within OMV. And here I'm selecting all of the grids. We'll scroll all the way down, click on save. Now let's go back and SSH into the Raspberry Pi and put in the password. And what we're gonna do right now is go and install the second script uh, with all of the uh, containers that will be installed automatically. So we're gonna copy the second script and we're going to paste. So this will take around about 15 to 20 minutes for the installation to complete. It will automatically reboot the um, DIY NAS that we just created with all the applications in it. Okay, you wanna give it a couple of seconds for the uh, NAS to start up. Uh, once you see the web UI, you want to access 
the web UI. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to access Portainer and I'm going to click on local containers. Now, these are all the containers already installed successfully. Now for Zigbee to MQTT based on the dongle you've connected, you could see it as created, started or stopped, but don't worry, we will uh, have it all uh, running correctly from this point onwards. Now, first up, what we're gonna do is go and test if Zigbee to MQTT is working. So I'm gonna click on MQTT Explorer and I'm gonna put in the host information, which is the IP address of the uh, DIY NAS. It ends with dot two. I didn't add any username and password, so I'm gonna leave these fields blank. I'm gonna click on connect. So this confirms that MQTT is working. Now, let's go ahead and configure Zigbee to MQTT, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to first access terminal, and I'm just going to go and see the ID of the Sonoff Zigbee dongle. And this is the port information that we need to use. So I'm going to copy this information, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and access the configuration.yml, which is located within the data folder. So I'm going to type ls cd data ls, and I'm just going to type in over here sudo nano config and hit the tab key, which auto populates, hit enter. Now over here, I'm just going to populate the server, MQTT server information. And for the port, we see that it's already populated over here. So uh, if you're using a Convy 2 stick, it would be a different serial ID. And since we're not using Convy, I can delete this line adapter. And front end information, I'm going to access the Zigbee to MQTT web UI through 8081 port and I'm just going to update the host and I'm going to leave the other information as is control X Y enter now I'm going to go into portainer click on Zigbee to MQTT I'm going to click on duplicate edit and I just want to update some information so that it starts correctly now under runtime and resources what we're going to do is update the host and container information so I'm just going to delete this paste and do the same thing in container. Now, once this is done, I'm going to click on deploy the container, replace, give it a couple of seconds, and there successfully it has started. Now I'm going to click on log, and we can see now the front end has started on uh, 8081, so I'm going to access it. There it is, Zigbee to MQTT already set up. Let me go to settings to make sure permit join has been enabled, and I just quickly turn on my uh, super son of Zigbee. There it is. I click on it, rename it quickly, click on rename device, exposes, on and off. So this confirms Zigbee to MQTT is set up. Now from here, let's go and access Homebridge, which is the same IP address of the NAS that we just did and the port is 8581, the default port. And click on get started, create a username and password, create account, open dashboard, voila, we got Homebridge set up. What we're gonna do is go into plugins and I'm going to look for Zigbee to MQTT. Click on install, going to update the information of the MQTT host, which is the IP address of the NAS. In, in some cases, users have been reporting some issues with the plugin, so you want to just make sure if you have no additional configuration, just cancel all of these. Click on save, click on save, restart service. That's it, it's successfully connected to the MQTT server. It also imported the device. So if I go to accessories, on, off, so let me go back to status and let me import this device into Apple HomeKit. Go to app, open up the Apple Home app, tap on add accessory, scan the QR code, add anyway, done. And now I can control it, control off, and it's also reporting there correctly. So this confirms that uh, home uh, bridge is set up, Zigbee to MQTT is set up, and now it's all into the Apple Home app. Let's go now and quickly integrate the Zigbee, uh, the scripted, application added my favorite uh, Yscam v2. So use the IP address of your NAS. The port is 10.0443. In some cases, users have reported as 11.080. So you want to test that. So it's not locating. So let's use 11.0, 11.080, enter. We have scripted setup. So create a username and password, login. All right, so quickly we'll go and install two plugins. That is the HomeKit and the RTSP. Now let's go to plugins, RTSP, add a device, create, it's a camera. So we'll give it a username and password. I have that information right here. Okay. And you want to add in the RTSP link. 
save RTSP and you want to go straight to integrations and extensions. You want to enable the motion detection and home kit and you want to go to motion detection, leave the settings as is, home kit, the sensor has been detected and you want to go back to integration and extensions, you'll see that home kit secure video is enabled so you want to click on that. So once that is done, what we're going to do is go back to plugins. You want to go to HomeKit and you just want to reload the plugin. And let's check if the device is working. So I go to plugins, RTSP, click on the camera, should get a feed here. So yep, I've got the feed. Now I'm just going to add it into Apple Home app. One of the best things to do with this camera setup is you want to go to HomeKit pairing and standalone accessory mode. So that's the best way of doing it. And what I'm going to do is click on add accessory more options if we don't see it over here we can go back to plugins we can go back to home kit we can reload the plugin to take effect go back to plugins and now let me go back to rtsp camera plugin Y scam and i'm going to tap on add accessory more options the cam is right there follow the instructions home kit pairing continue and you can go ahead with the rest of the configuration. And we've got HomeKit secure video again enabled for this voice cam. Click continue, tap on done. Give it a couple of seconds, it will show up here. There it is, working perfectly. It also gives me the recording options to use the HomeKit secure video feature. So with that, we have scripted setup. Now we'll just go quickly go ahead and set up Heimdall. The port is 8201. Now, this is one of the applications I'm showing a lot because this makes it a lot more easier to uh, access multiple uh, websites for Homebridge, Zigbee to MQTT, scripted, so you don't have to remember which port and, you know, saves you time, it makes you a lot more productive. So in this case, I'm just going to click this icon here, or you can click here plus. In this case, we look for application type Homebridge, and you want to put in the URL, and you want to put in your username and password. Click on this enable button. Test, success, save, close, never. So you can see a quick snapshot of what the behavior of the hardware is. So you can do that. You can also do the same thing with Open Media Vault, if I'm not mistaken. And that's how we can use Heimdall to quickly access all of this. So you can go ahead and do that for Zigbee to MQTT, which is a website and script it also over here as a website. Now from here, we've completed the entire DIY Smart Home Hub. But there's one more part uh, missing where we can go ahead and install this USB drive and ensure that we get the DIY functionality. So let's go and connect it quickly. And what I'm going to do is go to the Open Video Vault webpage and I'm going to go to storage, disks, and you see this already showing up. So this is the disk that I just connected. If it's not showing up, you can click on this icon to search. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file systems, click on the plus sign. I'm going to mount the drive, save. Once that is done, you want to go to apply the changes. So we've created a file system. Let's go to shared folders, click on the plus sign. You want to give it a name. So I'm going to call it DIY NAS. Pi 4, you're going to select the hard drive you just connected. That's the path. You want to leave the permissions as is. Click on save. So now that's the shared folder. Now you want to make the shared folder available across your network. First, let's go and apply the changes. Once that is done, you want to go to services. You want to go to SMBCIFS. You want to go to settings. Make sure it's already enabled that we had done earlier. And then you want to click on shares. Click on the plus sign, click on that folder we had just created, and that's about it. So you can add in any permissions you want to do over here, but we're going to leave it default settings. Click on save and you want to apply. And then you want to make sure lastly, the user information is the same that we had created when we flashed the SD card. So that was Pi and uh, we already created that default password. If you want, you can go and create additional users to access this drive as well as the NAS. So with that being said, let's go and test it. So I'm going to open up Finder. I'm going to scroll down all the way to Raspberry Pi and I'm going to click on Connect NAS. Pi is the name and the password that I had created. Connect. That's about it. So it is confirmed that we've connected to this USB drive here. Click on it. 
and I can also create a folder confirming that the uh, drive has been mounted. It's now shared across the network. And just like that, we've used the Raspberry Pi 4 at its core, created a DIY NAS using Open Media Vault 6, and from there pushed it further, did a lot more by installing all of the DIY smart home applications like Homebridge, Zigbee 2MQTT, Scripted, Heimdell. And from this point onwards, you can do a lot more by installing Plex and other applications to suit your DIY smart home. If there's anything I can help you with, uh, leave a comment down below and uh, let me know if uh, with your Raspberry Pi 4, if you're making the move towards this DIY NAS, which is much more affordable. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.